Well, we bless the Lord. So, Noah, can you do a recamp from last uh, last time? So, uh, last, if uh, you remember anything. Mm. Yeah, last meeting, uh, we covered, I think we covered 2.9 through 2.15. Mm-hmm. Um, and from what I remember, and also from what I see in my notes, uh, it was continuing to focus on the the, the character of a student, I think, mm. um, and the, the relationship between the student and the teacher. Mm. Um, and uh, I think we were making a bit of a clarification last time as well concerning uh, both the, the difference and the relation between the term student and the term man, which was used in the way that you translated and the way that uh, my copy of translation had, we, mm. uh, you were making sure to emphasize the fact that Confucius, in his true meaning of what he was communicating through these writings, was focused on the, the character and the life mm. or mindset of the student and mm. less of it applies in some way, but less solely on the broad term of a man or a supreme man, which was used. Mm. The wording was used that way. Mm. Um, what is what do you mean supreme man? That that wording is uh, in your translation. Yeah, he used to use a supreme man as he who this this and that. Okay. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. But I, I don't know that actually. Ah, I don't know where he came that term. So yeah. Anyway, funny. So we well in in your well in the real and correct translation of the way that you're communicating it, you use the term "godly man" most often. I think "godly man" yeah, is a better sure. way. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there were really uh, short but potent uh, characteristics of a godly man or that of a student. Um, some including. Uh, listening and acting upon teachings. Mm. Uh, so basically handling and responding to in wisdom that which was taught, mm. which really truly marks the the mindset or perspective of a truly good student. Mm. And then um, basically we, we also covered uh, how a teacher observes his students. Yes. And for instance, marking his motives or in which things in which he rests, I think was another translation. Yeah. Um, and then this one, I thought, I thought was probably one of the most interesting that mm. we covered was 2.11 where it said, he is a teacher who knows of old knowledge, un- who knows of old knowledge unto his learning and teaching of the new, of new knowledge. Mm. Um, and there is actually some very, uh, heavy correlation with a uh, verse in Matthew in the Bible, mm-hmm. Matthew 13, verse 52, yeah. where Jesus almost says those very words yeah. <laughs> in the way that he uh, expressed or was uh, conveying his teaching. Yeah. So I, I thought that was... Well, for some comments, feel free, guys. Yeah. yeah. So as we, we teach, I know you can be, uh, I can be very intimidating. Not to Elijah, I mean, so, yeah, <laughs> you don't care, so, anyways, so. <laughs> so feel free to share yeah. your thoughts, yeah, any thoughts on that point, the old and new knowledge of wisdom, um, I think it actually ties well with <clears throat> another, another writing that we covered, uh, in the same meeting, I think it was two point. 15, uh-huh. where it says, if one learns without contemplation, it is knowledge lost. Oh. Thought without learning is perilous. Yeah. Um, I think that has a, uh, a strong connection to this 2.11 here. How so? Um, because when it says, basically, he is a teacher who knows, actually didn't really write this very well <laughs> because okay. I was taking notes so it's kind it's of okay. to you can freely respond in how to follow your notes um, let me find the verse in Matthew real quick 
to expound on my thoughts. It's Matthew 13, 40 something. 52, I think. 52, okay. That's right, 52. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously this all relates to uh, the sphere of teaching and learning. Mm. And so basically there's this important relationship between uh, knowledge that has already been well, that's that's an interesting point. Is it is it better to express it as knowledge that has already been uh, acquired within an individual as old knowledge, or is old knowledge something? Um, does does old knowledge mean something different? In the sense that maybe it's, it's that's more of like a my my exposition. Yeah, my exposition. More more train of thoughts would you think mm -hmm. uh, more concentrated on the personal experience? You know, I. I my thinking is more about the span of human history, you know. So oh, I'm yeah. a human human that that culture the residue. So because that's what Confucius is about. Confucius is a, a famous teacher who he said, I don't want to compose anything or create mm -hmm. something for myself. He wanted to pass on the thing that I, that I pass on to him. And right. right. So yeah. interesting. So then you think about it, when he talking about the past knowledge, was more about not what he personally acquired, rather than the things he has uh, take hard to study, take hard to practice, feel really possessed, it, feel really, uh, you know, able to be an able teacher about it. And when you think about it, the Bible, is the Lord's position for the for the teacher of the law, which is a priest, supposed to be, it should be the same, you know, mm -hmm. so. Now, the other scripture I tried a little bit scared of earlier is when Moses gave the law, he many occasions talked to people, tried to reiterate the law to them. He said, you know, basically the things the Lord gave to you is yours. You know, so the things, uh, there, but there is another providence come giving you new things, basically, you know. So, now the things the Lord gave to you is yours. What are they? Evidently, it's the law and the spirit of the wisdom of the law. Making sense to the thing passed down. And I think the proper understanding, which is often missed by most interpreters of that scripture, oh, that, that statement mm -hmm. or conversation, is always concentrated on personal attributes yeah. or personal experience. I think it's very limited. We should have things apply to, to, the, to the context I try to apply. Am I right? So, yeah. So, I mean, consent to you, I might mm -hmm. not be succinct with my exposition, but you understand what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this has much, obviously, has much more to do with, much more to do than, uh, like, an individual uh, technique or method of teaching. It's, it has to do with, like, a completely yeah. uh, holistic... Yeah. Um, well, in personal things, might work, uh, yeah. might need it, but that... That's, I don't think, is the intention here. Yeah, right? it's not confined so, yeah, to that understanding. Yeah, it's exactly. Go ahead. Um, whenever, uh, my first interpretation that comes to mind when trying to understand this uh, particular statement is um, basically having a, a very foundational and progressive understanding and mindset when when teaching somebody. So it's, mm -hmm. it's less of, and again, this might sound like it's too individualistic. That's okay. Uh. But um, basically with the applying or use of old knowledge when teaching the new, um, it's, it, it, it almost seems like he's trying to emphasize the importance of uh, Building upon that old knowledge, yeah, and the sharing, <coughs> the me, learning of anything. <coughs> You're supposed to do this, this, this. Am I right? sorry? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have sneeze on me. Yeah. <coughs> you no, know, this morning I'm not sick. Okay. That's all right. Yeah. I'm you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not really yeah. Well, that's true. So. 
Yeah, you feel free to expand until you finish, you know, and then move on. So, I think you're right. Those are where we first is good way to think about these things, you right. know. So, yeah, you know, the whole thing is about what it means to be a good teacher more than this whole session. Sure. More than it, to be a, you know, he was talking about he passed on a whole way education. So he passed on the thing, he more than talking about how students should learn, he was now talking about how do you equip, equip teachers, am I right? So, yeah, this like, is yeah. very interesting because <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. just now I'm reminded of like yeah. this difference between old knowledge and new uh -huh. and the way that they relate to each other and how the new knowledge builds on top of the old knowledge. It reminds me of the correlation and relationship that's expressed in many of Paul's letters with the the purpose of the law and in relation to the culmination and purpose of God in the midst of his people. That's right. So That's right. basically, like for instance, the law, living, if, if this is a correct understanding, okay. then living solely under the law and nothing but the law is produces and is a way of sin and a way of life that is of sin and death. Yeah, it's is, it's untransformed life, right? Only exactly. light and mind, yeah. in a sense. It's like a, a ant, right? You know, as much you live in the song, you enjoy the thing, but you can't think like a man or act like a this man. This is the right? stuff we were covering in Romans, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. But you are you you're supposed to free agent of wisdom, am mm -hmm. right? Agent. Unless you want to think like an ant, you think everything teach you is to be an ant. To be the best ant in the world, you don't think wisdom is in, in, intended to make you what? To elevate a different way of life, to transform your thinking of life. Now, that's kind of thinking. As much as uh, we, we seem to ignore it, but actually not true, just think about it. Elijah said, I want to be a fireman. Kissing you, okay? No. You don't have that idea when you are five years old, right? You have to see some experience in you, inspire you, said, hey, I want to learn to be a good fireman, you know? So some movie, some, some um, other example in your life. You have never known the idea of fireman. Would you care to be a fireman? You can't, right? You can't even win that in the career. But then, then you grew up a little bit, maybe fireman more and more fade away, right? right? Oh, that might be a little bit the childish way of thinking. So sorry. <laughs> well, so, so yeah, so it's be think. Okay, there are a lot of things I want to learn and improve myself. Has nothing to do with a career, particular profession. Has to do with the whole list way how I learn things. Am right? So, so you open up what the all possibilities life. You know, you understand my point. You know, so you may eventually end up in a farm and. But your way of learning is not conditioned. Okay, I just want to be a farmer. I just want to be a farmer. I just want to be a farmer. Right? So, mm -hmm. so is in the laws, the effect on man, on the Jewish mind, when it's not taught by the Spirit, does not see God as a holistic way to try to. The law is one of the things, right? right? The more privileged to have, more. More, they will come to people. God gives them the law. You know, they have a better starting point, you know, compared to other people. But when they stuck with that, said, it's all about the fireman. What have you? They can't be a scientist. They think, Yen says my point, they can't, the, 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 the way of approaching things, we're, we're limited. We're, we're eternal vision, I use the word. Mm -hmm. So it's in our way more than we're thinking, education, for example. In the past, people only educated your grammars, Latin, Greek, in, in, um, in Western tradition, okay, European tradition. So only teach you how to polish to write a good letter, write a good article. Now, we would admire their knowledge, their will of writing very well, am I right? So, do you understand my point? Well, that's what every day they do. <laughs> I mean, that mean you don't write good things, okay, express good things, but that's the idea of what it means to educate a man. So then with, um, with the Greek, 
culture being reintroduced in Arab world, that's become a trend. I'm just talking, okay? So what it means to be an educated man in those cultures? So that everybody has no Greek history, you know, Greeks. Everybody knows history. They're f- everybody thinking about a Greek philosophy. You want to be educated man, that's the fashion of the day. So we have historians, philosopher, all kind of things begin to, it, it, it's good to rewind a certain religious traditional way because the, you know, the church tradition am right over European minds and thoughts. But at the same time, it, is that revival necessarily all healthy? Actually, we're bad. So you look at that, the major leaders of those revival of, of free thinking, see, most are believer, unbelievers, don't respect God. They literally borrow all those things, the channels of we hold, all things has been. You understand my point? You know, so sorry to tell you that. <laughs> So the, the, the conflict, well, my point is, all those trends and uh, all those waves, all those fashions through history, it confined the man of the age. As much as he's the best of his age, maybe, but he necessarily was ascribed to a higher way of learning, right? So, so learning under the law or learning under Greek thoughts learning on the Chinese thoughts, Confucianism, learning on the Islam thoughts, whatever, Buddhism thoughts. They all have their good and bad attributes, am I right? So you, you see my point, you know, so, but it, it's like any other train for um, the confinement, you know, there's a sitting over it. So people not able to break that mode, just you call the traditions, it's mad, you know? So uh, you, can, you can do ranking, you can, like many people do, is study all culture, try to say, I got the best out of it, maybe I can reconstruct everything, right? So that's my point, mm-hmm. right? kind of unify West of thought, I can use by all peoples, all the best thoughts in the world. Well, that is a, is a fantasy. Why all those things they can never be unified because they come from a different world view, different ideologies, how things should be on that went down to the core. It has to do with the source your wisdom where it came from. That's very interesting. Am right? So we in learning of things in, in life, you appreciate everything. Excel you think, you utilize all things available. But at the end of the day, you want to know wisdom different than knowledge or skill sets, right? So you got to know which is from which. Are they from a pure source or not? In our context, are they from God or not? You see my point. Or is God only intended for this to be applied in this way or not? Making sense to you? So, uh, just imagine, okay, you have basketball court. You play with everybody a basketball, right? So, you know, you will play the roles, you know, so whatever, you know, former team, you enjoy the team, right? So enjoy, you enjoy the game very much. What if you go to Africa? There's no court to begin with. Uh, what if there's no basketball to begin with? Hear, hear, hear me out. Are you going to say that I can't play any sports? I can't organize a game? I can't inspire with what I have to try to build a team, you know? You know, that's my point, you know? That's a ridiculous thing like that, am I right? So any field, you can win any game, am I right? So to play around, maybe not a ball, maybe a stone to throw a stone, you know? So. <laughs> Can't uh, run around with a branch. Who knows what you do, right? So, <laughs> and that's my point. You can organize. Why you can do that? Is because you see, you understand basketball as elegant, as 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 a, a beautiful regime, a game. It is, right? See, it's only a sports for entertainment, for building team culture, right? So to to. Uh, 
to, to try to have a good time in a sense. We don't borrow competition or professional stuff here, okay? So see the pure spirit of the game of basketball. Now, if you understand that, you recognize, well, I am well equipped to invent a new game or start something anywhere I want to. I want to be, am I? And says, my, I don't need a basketball or a search. Oh, football, I don't have a football either, so I can't do anything, you know, so, with sports. Well, that's the Jewish mind, unfortunately. They may have the best basketball in the world, <laughs> but they, their mind is so become ridiculous, you know? So it's like uh, they was. When the basketball court engagement the rules is only only for C to have a better game, am I? So they, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that, am I? So they begin to study many, many games, they begin to say, okay, you got to move your right elbow like this, and move left feet like this. They begin to what? They begin to tell you how to move your bodies, you know? If you don't do this, that's not good. You're not playing gospel. You don't understand the rules. You don't understand the game. You don't respect the core, uh, the team member. You don't respect our role. You don't respect the one who designed the rules. I mean, you know, the, the, the whole, the one who gave the game, am I right? Ridiculous, think about it. The, the whole thing was for you to what? To inspire you to go anywhere to organize a group of people to have a good time. But improve yourself, you know, how you enjoy the sports, right? Enjoy a team, a culture, a little bit. But what the, what, the, what the Jews did? They said, we're going to study all the professional, we're going to stipulate every move, let's, let's see how the right ambo is supposed to do. Well, you know that is not capable. Nobody can do that. I mean, or everybody do that is a foolish. And the sports player don't try to Make every move based on what? Based on the rules, or because the rules tell you it's the best move to make, you try to practice, all right? So, you understand my point? What they do, they have the spontaneous inspiration. They, 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 were in, they were built to do that, all right? You understand? You can't help to move in certain ways. You can't stipulate, say, okay, because uh, 100 people do this, therefore everyone had to do that. And 101, maybe he made another move, am I? He, 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 he may don't have an a, 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 a elbow to begin with. So, you know, so, what do you do? Can you tell me he can't play the basketball? But that's the their, their rigid thinking. Now, in human learning, as I try to tell you how to learn things, I hope I know the overblow the con concept, because you need to, uh, to have an agile mind, am I? And not on disciplined mind, but a, a, a very, very wise mind, a capable mind to learn things. Uh, did I make sense to you, Elijah? You guys are familiar with what I'm talking about, am I? So, I think anyway, the same yeah. concept could almost be the same, uh, the same idea could be expressed through, I think, one of the parables that Jesus gave yeah, go ahead. of the, the vineyard that produced no fruit. Yes. So his care and uh, attendance to the vineyard itself by caring for the fields, planting the seeds, giving them water, making sure that they had everything, everything they, they needed need. to grow, uh -huh. yeah. was like the provision that was the purpose of the old knowledge. Yes. Um, and also... For clarification, old knowledge, when, even when I first read it, may sound, may give the connotation of outdated or unuseful knowledge. That's, That's not, not true. That yeah. Old knowledge is... is use the word ancient. Ancient maybe. knowledge, yeah. yeah. Not outdated, not, uh, not obsolete all. knowledge. Not it's, at all. Yeah. It's just, it's the beginning, Not well, not the beginning, but just like the initial... And foundational knowledge. That's, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Now that is a cut to the core. Yeah, but when the fruit is not produced, then the new knowledge doesn't take its effect, and so yes. therefore the the purpose of the old knowledge never came to fruition. Like yes, the vineyard never produced the grapes. Yes, yes. So, I like your way of discussing things. So, 
That's where we're good and engaging. So, <laughs> why you like this? Look at me like that. So. <laughs> it's an important but, subject. Any, any thoughts on your part? Uh, mm -hmm. No, not too much. Not too much? Okay, feel free to pitch in and, uh, and stuff. Okay? All right. okay. Now, let's move on, if we possible. It says the second section, conversation 15 now, so... Uh, Nova, I know that you have a translation, bring it out, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do, we follow this, this, uh, this format a little bit. I'm going to do the trans reading, translations, and you read yours, okay? So okay. I'm going to do a, a common exposition there a little bit. Okay, is that okay for you? Great, so, yeah. yeah. So 2.15. 子曰,学而不思子望,视而不学子带 um, That's interesting, you know, talking about the old knowledge, new knowledge, so mm. I think we did this one last time We right? did this one? Okay, so yes, okay yeah. We're going to move on to 16 then 子曰,功夫一段,是害也已 Confucius said, he assumed that everything had two extremes or two ends, okay? So he said, on one side, on one extreme end, you try to attack the other end. That is a trouble, you know? So I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but let, let's read your translation there, so. Um, this is 216, correct? Mm-hmm. It says, the master, the master said, the study of strange doctrines is injurious indeed. Again, use the word doctrines, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, repeat again. Sorry, I'm asleep a little bit. Mm -hmm. The master said, the study of strange doctrines is injurious indeed. Oh, actually, that's not good. So, mm -hmm. the translation is, is wrong. So. Interesting. Well... Let me explain to you. It's like um, w confidence here, the contest, again, it's applied to the own contest, and right, it has to do with the contest. Her confidence more cared about how people study, how they thought as unity of uh, a discipleship with a teacher, how they discuss the things. So think about this as a disciple might be a better example of this. So two students come around, they move on. They're going to argue, right? They don't necessarily understand what the teacher is saying. They insist on their opinion about things, right? So two of them are going to argue with each other. And then they don't have a good piece to interact, to learn from one another, right? So when you, they, will, they will break down one thing as if each one have an have opposite side. Not out of the competition thing, it's a young mind. People tend to do that. They only see one side, like everything has many sides or many, many ends, right? So that's my point. So Kumpus is saying is that if somebody is not have a reconciliatory heart, a heart really peace, willing to discuss, work with others as a team, as a, as a contributing friendship, right? So that's my point. So what it does is always going to treat other as if it's competitive target, you know. So, so he will, whatever the other guy said, he will not. He will pick on him. He will. He will only seeing the things different than mine. He will then attack it. Not attack, attack the person per se, but uh, concentrate on differences basically. That says my point. But ignored. That they are all just one as a whole. Maybe the things he he's not learning as a whole. Am I right? Making sense to you? Mm -hmm. So you build a relationship in discussion, in learning with others, always what? Always arguing, debate, all kind of things. That's very normal in young people. And then you grew up, you understand it. Um, it everybody understands that. But Confucius don't want that kind of thing to be encouraged in the young mind, in the young students. He basically said, this is the wrong way to go about relationships, whether in siblings, whether in, in friendship, whether in, you know, 
comrades who, of our school students. Am I right? Common students. Am I right? Make it sense to you? You should not encourage this kind of thing. You should not engage this kind of thing because it's the wrong way, wrong culture to engage this thing. Now, again, people use this to other contexts, try to apply to what? To not in the classroom people or in the school of people, am I right? So they apply to uh, Western minds, you know, the whole mind is competition, argue each other, am I right? So making sense to you? Debate, you know? So they're not saying, uh, so therefore they will say, okay, you know, apply to the context. But Confucius is more about, hey, you young students need to have a better way to discuss it together. Making sense to you? So, well, my interpretation is, on um, my understanding, the context here all is about how to learn things together, okay? Under the guidance of a wise teacher. Making sense to you? So, nobody is your enemy in this context, you know, so. So, 2.17 said, the tune here is almost like a little bit frustrated. Right? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, it says here, the master said, You, shall I teach you what knowledge is? When you know a thing, to hold that you know it. And when you do not know a thing, to allow that you do not know it. This is knowledge. No, okay. The, anyway, you know, certain translations idolize the people, okay? So, <laughs> this is why it's like Jesus, am I? The Christians idolize Jesus, you know, as if he's a, he. They don't understand it. They have tempers, am I? They have a little bit of frustrations. They are real persons, you know? So here's the deal. I think you is one of the disciples. Evidently, he's very smart, okay? Yes, that's my point, you know, so... Well, it is funny because in this translation, it does... Uh-huh. He, it does sound like uh, Confucius has been slightly patronizing because... He is. In a sense, he's like, shall I teach you what knowledge is? Like, do yeah, I have to it, teach you the it, fundamentals? It, it exactly, it exactly. Yeah. So, out of frustration, right? Yeah. A student's run off with, with things that he don't know what he's talking about, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> You know, certain young people excited, you know, carried mm -hmm. away. What have you? you? They all talk things you they don't know much about. You know? yeah. so, the other day was uh, interview. Uh, uh, you know, the interview you talk about different uh, different people talking about different places. You mm -hmm. know, so uh, uh, there was a young man. Oh man, it's, oh, yeah. he used big words. You know, so uh, uh, talk about something. You know, the, the the other guy. Do you know what you talk about? Oh, not really. You know, so but, but in front of the everybody talking big words. You know, big big uh, concept. They do you ask him. Do you know what is this coming out of your mouth? You know, so <laughs> talking about the scientific things. You know, not something oh. that is uh, just. Kendra, you know, so we're talking about the um, biology things, you know, so I don't quite remember, but it, understandably, there are certain uh, young people's attitudes of uh, learning things or dis discuss things is very, very flimsy, very, very unsolid. So when a teacher like a Confucius, eventually he's a father figure, he's, he's you know, he will not encourage that kind of foolish talking all day long. All the person to carry that in his life is harmful to that very person, also to the time he spent with others. Am I right? So it's not healthy. So he put up with it. But finally, he, he, he's, he's, he's frustrated. <laughs> so he said, um, let's see, say he called his name. Hey, you! You know, I'm going to use the tune. I think it's right, okay? <laughs> Okay, let me tell you something. <laughs> we're we're shy, right? So, do you know? <laughs> let me tell you something. Do you know? If you know something, then you know something. If you don't know something, you don't know something. That is really knowing something. <laughs> you know, so, repeating like a, 
making sense to you? Yeah. yeah. That's exactly the word to word translation almost. <laughs> mm. Okay. You realize I repeated what I shared. What the translation of that? You imagine Confucius talk to this uh, student, what he's saying? Let's repeat it. Yo, hey, let me, let me teach you something. Do you know? You know? Do you know? You know something? You know something. If you don't know something, you don't know something. <laughs> to know this is a real knowing something. You know? Making sense here? So, what I mean? Well, uh, from my knowledge, I think it means like, like, if you don't know something, you don't act like you know it. And yeah. then if you do know something, you... Then you know something, yeah. right? Solidly engage it. Don't pretend to be something. I don't think Confucius was talking about the, a hypocritical thing. So he was just a young lad, don't know how to carry himself. He finally put out with the thing he said, well, be solid with what you know, you know? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> know how to carry yourself, you know? So, <laughs> that's For some reason, it reminds me of the verse, uh, uh -huh. may your yes be yes and your no be no. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's exactly what I want to turn to. Yeah. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no. This is, we often think that is a religious doctrine, right? So, just actually talking about the simple will of how to be a good learner. This sort of wisdom and mindset yeah. of, of thinking about knowledge itself is like directly uh, perpendicular to the understanding where you can take such a simple concept and expound on it and think of all these high and lofty ideas and at that point that way of thinking makes it to where there is there is no yes and no there is no black and white everything can just be everything yeah and it's it's a sort of philosophical mindset where um there's no true grounded foundational truth and that's not. very dangerous mindset. it's a so sad yeah you know we this is here there's a people argue about the facts this news called uh, today's people spinning, am right? For political agendas, or whatever. But it's not really uh, always for political reasons, the spinning things, okay? To twist the facts or truth. But actually, they literally argue, decently argue about things that are supposed to be very simple. But one of the reasons is you study the con Constitution. This nation have a high regard for constitution. We honor constitution. Everybody serves constitution. And rights are supposed to be in, in the government of a basilisk. But even you ask about it, what your opinion about constitution, everybody has their own interpretation of the constitution. You know, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. There is a, a, a school of thought called the originalism. Originally, the full intent was that, hey, we want an, really stick what the constitution had to say. <laughs> so, this is, that's what they're thinking, right? Don't, don't morph it or expand it or, or try to interpret it in a way that is considered never meant, or meant to say it. That's a law, it's basic law interpretation. That's a basic decency to do justice to anything that is uh, fundamentally clear, you know? So, unless it's not clear, understand there's different things not clear. Consideration of general, many things are generalized, right? So, but it's interesting how people would interpret the same sentence with different understandings. I don't necessarily have ultra motive per se. In sense, my point is, I literally don't understand what that words really try to say, and they use a the own set of uh, philosophies or methodology to interpret the scriptures. I'm sorry, interpret the text. Now, why? Why do they have so many opinions? You know, in the bulk of the day, there is only one opinion stand, am I right? So, making sense to you? So, there may be compromise, there may be debate, but uh, in the end of the day, we need to know that as well. Am I right? This is not settled matters. This is a uh, Confusing, so it's not settled, right? Don't impose as if it's settled. I There's think it's no difference. Too. Yeah, go ahead. The Constitution, which is such a like a foundational text to all the uh, the rule and governance of our government, was actually written by people that weren't in complete agreement with each other. Not <laughs> it at was all. Actually, written. Not by at people all. But that, we idolize yeah. it as if it's what. Yeah. 
this word clearly things, right? Mm -hmm. So, but there is a spirit of things. There is a ideology of things. We need to concentrate on that. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> the people, different party, different philosophers, different uh, interpreters, they lost that. To a fight, they think they high score the constitution, but they what? Their idea of what the constitution embodies the nation supposed to be, what the people supposed to be, it totally wrong. I mean, totally has nothing to do with the forefathers who are thinking about it. Now, borrow that word quickly. That's only two or three hundred years. Everybody can read the original documents. Of the, we have the history, right? We have a mini record about Washington, those signers, right? The Constitution, right? So we're supposed to know them very well. And we study them. Legends book reading about each one of them. Everybody professes they know about it, right? About the time. Matter of fact, they do we know? Few actually know, am I right? Few actually care to know, almost. They want to write a book, they want to pr proposing a, a better understanding, they want to be a, a better scholar, they want to maybe just invent some new ways to interpret things, to make a, make a, make a fame for themselves. I mean, that says, my Pu decently said, I want to know the spirit and the heart and the intent of the Constitution. Really stick to it, you know? So, and that's my point, you know? So, now, that being said, you know, no law will not change on, down the road, am I right? So, impossible. So, to understand that nature, I'm not uh, accusing anybody. I'm just saying the same kind of confusion or division apply to uh, interpret anything, especially the Bible. We see that it's so true. People, Interpreted, they don't really care what God wants to do with the people anymore. They don't care what God wants to do with the individual anymore. They what? They more care about their ideas, the schools, the ways of interpreting things and what? That really how God wants to change a man and build up people. Right? So now with that being said, you know, we do need to diligently study the scriptures. I mean, you get acquainted with different school of thoughts. So Go ahead. Any comments on your part? Uh, I think so. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Twenty two uh, two eighteen. Zi Zhang Xue Gan Lu Zi Yue Duo Wen Xue Yi Shen Yan Qi Yu Zi Gua You Duo Wen Xue Dai Shen Xing Qi Yu Zi Gua Hui Yan Gua You Xing Gua Hui Lu Zai Qi Zong Li Ya. Let's hear your interpretation. Uh, let me let me uh, let hear your interpretation first. This one's uh, actually pretty long. Let's see. Yeah, it is. The master said. Well, first it says um, I can't pronounce. Uh, it's Zhang. Zhang uh -huh. was learning with a view to official emolument. What? So emolument is like well, the definition here is. Uh, a salary, fee, or profit okay. from employment or office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it says, the master said, hear much and put aside the points of which you stand in doubt, while you speak cautiously at the same time of the others. Then you will afford few occasions for blame. See much and put aside the things which seem perilous, while you are cautious at the same time in carrying the others into practice. Then you will have few occasions for repentance. Mm. When one gives few occasions for blame in his words and few occasions for repentance in his conduct, he is in the way to get emolument. Yeah, that's... That's... Um, that's interesting. So, that's basically the translation, I think, is very good. So... Mm. Uh... So he, I, guess, I guess his student was trying to basically uh, prove himself to be a credible person Yes. in order to receive an emolument. Yes, yeah, the, the teacher okay. encouraged him to be a, 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 a prudent person, you know, mm. um, practical person, a wise person in the midst of uh, dealing with things. But the here interesting, uh, the context didn't translate. It's like a, the teacher actually here, or Kung actually used um, 
on the doctor diagnosis <coughs> uh, the uh, the problem on the on a, on, a, on a patient. Okay, so illness patient. So like uh, you study a lot, you don't just quickly jump the conclusion. This is what the the cause for that disease. Right? Then ascribe a, a a solution to it. You know, and that's my point. You want to remedy things with a careful, almost a scientific accuracy. Right? So apply this kind of um, practical and scientific and uh, prudent way approaching things, that's what he's saying. But he used the uh, doctor diagnosis diseases, okay, as a um, parable almost here. said, so, uh, it means you, you hear a lot, you observe a lot, you know, so, but if something is doubtful, you don't have a sure answer, what do you have here? Just don't jump into conclusions. The result is like, okay, I can, I can, I'm gonna learn more. I don't need to just come, 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 quickly come to conclusion, right? So here's a, this statement or this conversation is actually almost a pair with the last statement, right? So, 圣言起语 means then, you know, when, when you know something, you know, you knowledge about something, you know, then expound on those things. Now, if the things that uh, you don't know, they so said, I don't really know. I'm, a, I'm a confused on this matter. I'm, I'm, I'm still observing. Am I right? But then, then other things, you know, there are things in between. Am I right? So, you know, then be cautious, be prudent with your opinion. You know, and that's my point. Then you are not uh, make wrong speech. Am I? So you are not, people will say, oh, that person is, his word is credible. Am I? Making sense to you? So his, his opinions is prudent, you know, and wise, and solid. So that talking about the conversation, right? It's because if you look at a person, how people handle relationship or want somebody to serve them, it's often the observe through their speeches, and through the we how they do things, am I right? Making sense to you? So he would talk about the conversation, how to carry yourself in ways con- conversing with others. And the other one is to talk about how you do things. Now, if you, you, you know, said, if the things you were experienced with it, then you can have more confidence to do it, am I right? If you don't worry, have a very, very no experience or very little experience about it, then leave it like that. Then in between things you were experienced and you were much inexperienced with, then you know, be careful. Again, be prudent how you carry things out. Am I right? So make it sense to you? So then you will not regret a lot when you do something that consequently you might have to change things, am I right? You regret what you did. So if your conversation is you don't make a lot of mistakes. And if you carry something, you don't have a lot of regret doing certain things. Then people will notice you, you're a capable person, you're a very solid person. Then people will trust you, you don't tell you to handle things. Uh, then what have you. Then you go learn salary, no problem, you will have your salary, right? So because people will hire you. You know, people wanted to entrust you with responsibility. Thirdly, they will provide for you. Am right? So a man is worth his wages. Comment on this, Elijah? Do you have any thoughts? Uh, no, Talking? Not so far. Okay. I'm a few notes. Yeah, I know you hear and learn things differently, um, but sometimes it's good to talk. Am I right? to ask questions? So mm-hmm. this is my mm-hmm. point. You engage conversations. So, yeah. Me and no one don't mean, hope don't intimidate you, okay? So you can ask the questions. There's no, there's no qu- wrong questions. If it is wrong, I will tell you. Well, Elijah, that's problematic. Well, let's, mm-hmm. yes, I will tell you. Then you learn not ask wrong questions, right? But you can't start somewhere. So go ahead. Um, the 
this is almost like a like a, a sort of method or formula almost for uh, how to carry yourself in even something that we were discussing last time in, in discussion and in uh, maintaining that's the start of who is here maybe so yeah 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 so would anybody give me some comments on this mm-hmm. would anybody ask his teacher how to get a salary <laughs> would anybody just do that no you understand those cultures you can't just go to a teacher without uh, paying something okay and that's my point it costs you to be a student mm-hmm. and Confucius never refused what well, the teacher pay him. It's not like Jesus, okay? So even Jesus said, what? Sending him out. He said, you're worthy of your wages, you know? So you're a teacher. Now, that's understand the Asian culture is the education market, not publicly supplied. So the one who dedicates himself in those cultures to teachings, they expect the one they teaching what? To support them, am I? And it says, well, they may be not enriches them, they're not like today, being hired by a prof- being a professor in university, their salary is secured. All published books, their salary, their income is secured. Those days they don't, right? So what, what it depends on. The teaching has become a, a profession for them, right? So, and there's a way how you're getting taught. So there might be rich students contribute a lot, a poor student, he still need to contribute, am I? So different people have a different financial standing. I'm not encouraging we practice that, you know. I'm not saying that at all. But think about it. These students ask him what about the finances, literally, about the how do we earn a living? Do you understand my point? It, you know, that is where we're awkward. Am I? Who would go to the teacher to, to tell you, teacher, I, I can barely make a living, but I still want to learn from you. I want to pay my share. I have a hard time to pay my share. Can you tell me how can I make a solid living and, and share? And the conference is a world kind of man. You can see this, am I? So he must have a lot of reservation over this man, how he does things. And this is my point, you know, and uh, it cost him in life as well. That's why he might not even have carried jobs <laughs> to make him a salary. Make sense here? So he waited, you know, as the time comes, we're practical. We're practical, said, well, my, my, my student, <laughs> you might be want to be careful with what you, how you carry yourself. Be prudent how you carry yourself. Now, would Confucius see that, this as a generosity, a uh, general conclusion, principle to tell him, or is the word practical that we're a person? He must study the student's track records, am I? Seeing a lot of missing opportunities, a lot of mistakes, a lot of regret happen to him. Spoil the chance for him to make a good living, am I? And he said, well, I lost a lot of my job. Uh, what I do? Can, can, I, can I get a better job? Can I get a better job? You struggle with that. Do you see people struggle with that? Well, they're louder in this life. <laughs> <You're the struggle. laughs> but they never study the real problem. It's not the profession you carry. It's not, maybe not the thing you do. It's the way you carry yourself. Eventually, you're going to spot the opportunity, the best opportunity you have. The other day, I'm so sorry to say this. I, I don't quite remember the, the, the company now, okay? So, Ben, I, I read the news, I'm thinking, is that interesting? I think it's an investor or somebody. It's where we're, it's, uh, it's a backer or somebody, you know? So, now you don't get hired in these days by where we're um, good in West Bank or whatever. They, they really need a lot of credentials. You need to really study hard to be one of those managers, am I? So to be promoted in those environment. Oh, city back. City back fire somebody. And uh, the reason he got fired is because he was a stealing sandwich. 
<laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> well, let's just think about it. me. I mean, well, really, I need to laugh over. Am I the, the newsletter? You know, the news didn't really write how how this guy get fired, right? So, didn't give all the details. It's just strange, you know, somebody getting fired because of sandwich, right? <laughs> Laughable, it's a laughable story, but the, yeah. I don't think the news broadcasting actually just you know, under to attract news, right? So really think through what's really going on here. No, what's really going on? I don't want to speculate. This is a simple common sense deduction. Okay, so what this gentleman did that caused him to get it fired? <laughs> He's a high standing in the in the company. Okay. It get far because he, he he's, he, he, he 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 took a sandwich. Am I? You know, <laughs> he didn't pay for it. So what's really going to happen? Did his management come on board and said, "Hey, we did going to take stock in our sandwiches." <laughs> There's some sandwich missing. This guy just okay. You're stealing from my company. We're going to ball on you. <laughs> Nobody do that. I mean, who care about the sandwich, right? <laughs> Your friend, you will feed him the sandwich, no problem. So what's really got him fired with the sandwich? Nobody asks a story. <laughs> Common sense. What's the story? Well, I think in that news article, they may have been focusing on the irony. Yeah. Um, of that situation. Yeah. But like you said, they weren't focusing on the, the actual. Uh, or like a holistic approach to the situation, which may have been that this small instance of the stealing of the sandwich may have been just a an example or a product of his overall attitude and the way he carried himself within the workplace, which there may have been very really bad. There you go. Yeah. There you go. He must were adamant. He think this is nothing, or he may be caught red-handed. Taking a sandwich for granted. I'm a high manager. I can, you know, I can do something. Maybe a, a word minimal worker. Maybe I'm sort of sorry in the cafeteria. Took an insult. Said, "Hey, you're not supposed to take a sandwich. If you take a sandwich, can you pay for it?" I don't think some cafeteria will have an audacity to challenge him. You know, just to bring him to blow it up. Am I so? Somebody asked him to pay for it. He blew it up. <laughs> Do you understand my point? What if I just pay for it and, and apologize for it? Would anybody say it make a big deal of it? And they did not. He become very disrespectful for that person. Would challenge him. You're not supposed to take free sandwiches. <laughs> so make a big hard time on that person. Maybe it did harm to that person unfairly. And that person had to complain. He had to complain. I mean. This arrogant young man, <laughs> you know, get a promoted, think it's all the whole business. <laughs> you know, he's the owner of the business, so the companies have a certain decent rules. So say, well, we're going to we're going to address every grievances. And they study this, and this young man attitudes us allow me to see this. I almost see the whole picture. You know, so. Say, oh, you gotta give me a hard time because I just. A sandwich, you know. Don't you have graduated? I'm gonna hold this money. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Manager finally put out with him and said, "Well, we will just get all the sandwich with you. <laughs> you can't fire me. We will fire you." <laughs> yeah. If you apologize to the person, apologize for you know the sandwich. Wouldn't the, the manager would take? High value investment in him, am I? Hard to hit, willing to pay a lot of salary, <laughs> give him a good position. Would they? Would they just easily write him off, discharge him, unless he put a a wrong fight? Am I challenge the the approach, the management, challenge the management himself, as if uh, what he's 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 the one supposed to decide all those manager how is it wrong? <laughs> Now why that young man? Come to that place, thirty something years old, evidently not the so experienced in life. Why he think it's okay for him <laughs> to spread him around like that in a company like this, 
cause all the drama in India and lost his job. And after this, I don't think he's going to have a good job for a long time, right? So why is he willing to put all that at the stake? What happening to him? My point is, what kind of education he got is wrong. <laughs> Now, however, the topic we just talk about is a very, very interesting topic, right? <laughs> Some man studied hard, worked hard, but something was missing in his education. Become a simple stumbling block for him. So this young disciple of Confucius, he made very capable, very enthusiastic, but they don't know how to carry himself. The point is, well, nobody tell him how to carry himself <laughs> when he was young. <laughs> Hold up your hand. And they continue said, as long as you study hard, as long as you got a good profession, as long as you da 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 da, but don't do personal attributes, don't do character, don't don't learn how to how to carry yourself in relationships. What they don't understand, that's most important in life. This is more than a salary. On a career, this is a whole nation. What if you're a king? You're gonna carry yourself. Everybody who said, "Oh, I need a modern armor king," I will. You know, says my point. You know, so make sense to you. What if you're a lawgiver? You have to write the rules, a law for 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 the whole nation. Am I? <laughs> Making sense to you. So you just gonna just sleep away? Said, "Hey, you know." <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> there is a, there is a we seems good to man, but in the end, it's destruction. Because in doubt, things am right. So, but there is a we some seems insignificant. Oh, everybody know we'll make a love matter of it. You know, make it. Oh, let me read it for it. But nobody want to learn from it. Everybody, find, ah, that young. Young managers lost his job because of sandwich. Love for word. <laughs> you know, wise man don't think about the sound. It's about the uh, irony of a, a, a special reason. We said, well, we need to know what's really caused this young man to destructing his lifestyle. Where that came from? And now came merely from a young young man. Now then you know the news broadcaster who wrote this news. Well, he don't get the real lesson either. <laughs> And everybody laughs over these matters. They don't get the real lesson either. <laughs> Maybe the whole culture don't get the real lesson. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. pray for us. Lord, our hearts are truly filled with gratitude to know that your Spirit has revealed and continues to reveal the truth to us. Lord, to take off these spectacles of the of worldly wisdom, Lord, where everything truly is is fuzzy, Lord, everything there's there's no true distinction between that which is right and wrong, Lord, that which comes first and that which goes last. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would continue to seek after this perspective and this mindset, Lord, that truly draws these lines, Lord, shows us that which is. Lord, approved by your Spirit, Lord, and that which is to be shunned, Lord, and detested. Lord, I ask that, um, Could be, yeah. Lord, our hearts would be open to receive this truth, Lord, and to not only receive it within us, Lord, but to outwardly express it, Lord, in mm. our way of life, mm. Lord, in our speech and in our action, mm. Lord, even in our way of learning, mm. Lord, things that. Uh, As simple, Lord, as in our education in school, Lord,、mm. and even the building of relationships,、mm. Lord, in our relationship with you,、mm. and learning、uh, spiritual concepts, Father.、Mm. So, Lord, I ask that in this way, Lord, we would mature as sons,、mm-hmm. Lord, and not mature as children of this earth or of this world. So, Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' name.、Mm. Amen.、Mm. I just remind something. You want to hear more?、Mm-hmm. I want the story. This is this is my imagination. I don't have real facts, okay, but I think it's all correlated. 
about 2008, that's when we were quite young, there was a financial crisis hitting the whole world. Now, prior to that, the, uh, uh, the whole world, especially in Western banking system, there was a lot of speculations going on. People would uh, speculate the market, you know, so there are certain backers, you, you know, like this young man, a profession actually, they're going to buy currencies, buy bonds, and see do speculation, literal work called speculation, okay? So the word is called speculation, okay? In, in the market, they're called speculation, okay? So they will bet on a certain amount. It's well high risky, okay? So mm -hmm. you can earn money very quick, also lose money very quick. In those times, the finance is so blooming that there's really not too much oversight going on. So city back, I remember in London, there was one young man, well, I think in charge Asian market or something like that. He did a, I don't quite remember the, the incident as well. But he lost billions of dollars. <laughs> and nobody oversight him, nobody check on him. And he was always concentrated, uh, considered as a star in the company, you know? So, you know, that's my point. I think, most possibly is after the city back lost so much it caused a whole reputation destroyed. You know the effect for that when you lost the like that happened, a lot of people invest in your back, you're gonna withdraw their investment. You know, more than doing damage to the, they will lost a lot of clients, am I? Nobody can trust them because of mismanagement. And that's my point. They must suffer a lot loss beyond the market loss. And says, you know, so making sense to you? So I think they have to shut down certain branches because of it, stop the whole operation. So, in the, um, now those are my lingering memories, not the facts, okay? So I don't quite remember. So. But imagine if I'm the city back management, what am I going to do? I got to be very careful, don't have that kind of young people to come <laughs> make a mess for me again. I'm going to be very careful with certain attitudes of young people. Make it sense to you? And now the whole thing, why the young person made the whole mess for the, for the management? is because he never account himself to it. It didn't allow him to play around and write with the money. But most importantly, he never think he need to come to you to authority to tell us what he's doing to use the system. Now, if I'm a management, I'm going to be maybe, maybe, uh, maybe just crack it once for all, am I? In order to meet this kind of a terrible damage down to the company, what am I going to do? Would I have young people on board with greater responsibilities to not listen to my instructions? Mm, come, in you know, that's my point, listen to what the company has to tell you. To. So, come back to the young man who fired a sandwich. What do you think he is really challenging? He will, would he challenge only personal about the sandwich or he challenging the whole intent the company said, we don't young young people to challenge our decisions, to continue to do things as if there's no oversight and accountability, right? Making sense to you? So, now, what if you are the manager of the CD bank? What kind of young people you pick on in order to limit such young people, to screen them through? So, not any up when they make a lot of hard work for your business, right? Do a lot of damage. You may be just starting with sandwich. <laughs> That's a good place to start. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, continue to pray, no one. So, there's a wisdom, am I, on either side. On the side of the employee, this one, a student, is uh, to learn to be wise in life, to carry yourself better. But on the manager level, what do you do? If you're a teacher, what do you do? Am I? You're going to use other people to teach us responsibility, what do you do? You need to learn to discern how they, how they carry themselves, right? So nothing wrong about it.
That's what wisdom is about. Practical wisdom. So, go ahead. <clears throat> yes, Lord, in light of this distinction that your wisdom brings, Lord, I ask that we would truly act in discernment and understanding, Lord, whether we are, are students, Lord, and followers, Lord, or if we are teachers and leaders, Lord, I ask that in any stage in life, Lord, in any position or place of authority, Lord, that we are put in in relation to the lives of others, I ask that we would always continue to act in this way of discernment and mm -hmm. understanding, Lord, applying knowledge, mm -hmm. Lord, not seeking to simply acquire it, Father. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, I pray that in this way, um, truly a culture would be produced, Lord, mm -hmm. this culture that you seek to instill and manifest within your set-apart peop people. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, I pray this and bless your people in this way, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, you know, more common notion was that, hey, that's too hard for the young man. The company leadership is ridiculous, I'm a little bit, right? So, up to conventions. Now, bring it back to the backdrop, two instances. I had to deal with young people now. Before damage being done or after damage. The first is done, damage already done, right? And deal with it. The second one, maybe damage need to come about, but I'm going to how to work hard to eliminate. Me ask you, the uh, instances, I need to use an easier example to teach all employee, all the company to register a lesson. Which lesson I should be really good for me to teach? And I lost billions of dollars <laughs> to teach the whole company, uh, everybody a good lesson. Or I can use one sandwich, it is a good lesson. I mean, for the company's sake, okay? So not, not, maybe unfair to the gentleman. <laughs> Seems good, good, unfair. Really not unfair? Really? <laughs> a person make a fuss about the sandwich? Why should I, you work with me? <laughs> with greater responsibility for millions, billion dollars. I don't want you to be there. Really unfair? <laughs> no. <laughs> In every way, it's affairs. <laughs> he why that on himself? It's just thinking about it. Okay, so now if I'm a manager of the company, I want to teach my, the one under my management said, do not speculate. Do not, uh, you know, uh, ignore oversight accountability. Am I right? Which way I should, uh, which is a better example for me to establish? Which is easier? I don't know whether the question is good or not. I mean, basically, you want to teach that after you lost a lot of money, or you want to teach that before? You <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is more, more, this, more beneficial? Elijah, do you understand my question? If not, then let Noah rephrase for you. Yeah, rephrase. So basically, in the context of this example that he's giving with the young man that caused damage to business, to investment, which option would be better to, for the business to have to suffer that mistake? And I, I want to tell something. Everybody thinks this is an awkward topic. This is really the most enlightening, exciting, and, and, and substantial topic in life. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you understand my point? <laughs> but why we think it's not an important topic? It is an awkward topic. Because human have a same consciousness. <laughs> yeah. It almost seems like this is a result. <coughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. And this is just tied to the example itself. But it almost yeah. seems like it's like this. Uh, this process of business comes as a result of the the poor quality of the modern systems education. Absolutely. Because in having to bring bring it down to this really simple and almost an often humiliating instance of having to go over the lesson with the sandwich, for example, yeah. instead of the, the billion dollar loss, it's, it's a, this having to go over this really simple example is a result of the, 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 the poor quality of the today's system of education, because that's something, that lesson that's taught with the sandwich should be something that's should be taught in when you're a teenager. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, your parents should tell you. Your elders should tell you. Your yeah, teacher like should we tell you. Earlier. Yeah. yeah. Why would I hire somebody to begin with? 
don't know how to deal with sandwich. <laughs> That's a crazy. Yeah. Why? Because the whole education, the, the corporate culture, the whole society has the wrong culture to begin, to begin with. So, until they learn a uh, billion dollar losses, they don't really know how to start with invalid or young people. Even. But surely the culture has to lost that to, to start. <laughs> or should you start in the beginning, not drifted by a certain basics of life? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So rephrase the question, I want the Elijah to hear the lesson. So. so like I was saying, would it be, which option uh, would be best? Would it, would it be best to uh, go through the stage where the, the company ends up losing millions of dollars and then having to teach, or, or losing millions of dollars because of a, the misconduct of a young man within that business? who was investing without responding and keeping his, uh, his superiors up to date? Or would it be best to have taught that young man a humiliating but essential lesson through his, his smaller mistakes, for instance, with the stealing of a sandwich? Which one would be better, the first or second? Probably the second. Yep. So why? Um, because like he probably shouldn't have been hired in the first place if he wasn't educated in the work that he's supposed to do. Mm. Oh, he's doing a good job with his job. I think he takes pride in that. That's why he had confidence to challenge and everybody he said, you should not pick on me with sandwich. Or have a, be taught how to be a good employer, employee. So how is that going to be taught in his life then? Should be ended up the management the corporation on the back, come up top of him to stress all things. So when that lesson be learned? It should be learned before you go to work. Exactly. Okay. So if that young man never learned that lesson, what is missing in his life? What is missing? Evidently, he's well educated and well capable, excellent young man in everyone's eyes until this instance happened, right? <laughs> We make a pose, oh, <laughs> there's a problem with this young parent. <laughs> and they call a fight. And anybody can let it go, right? I don't think if I was the manager, I would pick on a sandwich. I just, oh man, don't do this next time, you know? So, so why is the management hard on him? It's because he has the backdrop of a million do billion dollar loss, and right? they can't do anything. It's about to be hard on certain regulations. So making sense to you? So now, what do you, Let's just think about this, Elijah. Now, is this a bad young man in everyone's eyes? Or a good young man? I mean, <clears throat> come on, you know, so. He must be a wonderful student, <laughs> wonderful employee. So what is really missing here? What's, what's, what's the real problem with this young man's education or brain? The wrong teacher. Yeah, or expound why? Um, well, the wrong teacher taught him the wrong way to uh, interact with what he's... I don't think any teacher is supposed to tell him that. I mean, I'm, I'm teaching math. So what, should, I, should I tell him how to, how to deal with certain things? Can I teach that? I'm sure it's my responsibility to teach him. I I'm, don't I'm, I'm care about the math, right? So. Making sense to you? So, I, I, I'm not parents. Just thinking about <laughs> Got my popular thinking, okay? So, he, he's a good math student. He's the best. He's always number one, you know? He do his homework. He even help out their, their, home, <laughs> their homeworks. So, what are the complaints about this young man? I have nothing to complain. He's a wonderful student. To me, if I'm this math teacher. So, no. It's not his teacher's fault. So let's trace back. So what, what is going on with this young man? Laying it up in this place. Do a case study. Yeah. Does that have anything to do like, with his parents? 
Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Great to do with the parents, am I right? Big time with the parents. But listen, well, parents can only teach you so much. <laughs> We, you're thirty years old, man. You're in the working place. Should not you know better? I mean, common sense. The whole society is. You you learn from everyday life is your parents are not in charge of your thirty years how you behave when you face you know somebody saying you know I'm supposed to take a sandwich of free rice right? so so what is really missing this young man's life who is responsible for his、uh, failure at the moment his parents responsible the teacher responsible society responsible or himself responsible. Think about it. Who is responsible? Himself. Yes. Himself. Lack of a basic, decent understanding of what need to be learned in life is responsible. Okay. The parents can only tell you what the right way to do, but you want you don't want to do it. You don't want to go there. Can your parents to bother and really do it? Can teacher do that for you? Teacher can inspire you, can guide you, can shed light for you. But can teacher drag you to do it? Nobody can, am I right? So, that's that's my point. Now, I think in this op or or deal, so called quote quote, to the young man, every we others have tried to tell him the what? Just do the right thing, have the right attitude, and we'll let it go. Did not everybody? Would you think is everybody pick on him? <laughs> everybody try to give a hard time, or everybody try to blow this up? <laughs> so why he push everybody to the <laughs> and in the end they had to be very hard on him. Said, "Well, you're fired." <laughs> so what is really in this young man that has caused all this flared up this problem? What's going on with this young man? Is he have a yield spirit? Do he have a a humility ham hard? Do he have a basic decency? Or is he arrogant, defiant, and powerful? Huh? Or he's totally arid, uh, maybe condescending or despicable in certain attitudes. Somebody. He's a cafeteria. He's a cook or whatever. Some serving, uh, ser- serving there. They're human beings. Am I right? He take free sandwich. Do they have not responsibility to check on him? So you're not supposed to do that. Well, if somebody did that, you apologize, pay for it, as any decent man would do. Am I right? Decent human being would do. But what he did? He basically despise the person who check on me. You know, I suppose have right because you are this is currently in the cafeteria. I'm the big manager. Well, that attitude provoke other them, right? So we can send to you. And he refused to pay for it. Especially, I think, if I'm the servant to serve him the sandwich, I would call him. Then I would say, Hey, please pay for it. That's it. <laughs> That's, but they don't pay for it, and then threw a bad attitude towards me. Or has something to complain about him, right? So then I complained to my. I didn't want to blow it up for him. I was doing my job, complaining. He had a bad incident happen. I didn't expect to ruin his career. Am I? So my job is okay. Something happened to me. I'm, I'm terrible, you know. So I got a report to my supervisors. And supervisor come to okay, you know. I mean, maybe a little bit lost myself, you know. But is that not me want to ruin his life? Impossible, am I? So turn out I ruin his life. Let's think about it. <laughs> On the news everywhere, what do you think I think? I think good about myself. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe I'm. Maybe I, I have a little decency. I will feel bad and sad about this whole story, am I? This whole episode of life. Now, if I'm then. Servant, should I stop check on people to not take free sandwiches? <laughs> What lesson are going to pass on to my children? 
when I send them to school. Just learning from a real learning. Now, you guys come here to learn real learning, am I right? So, is this what I share with you? Is it redundant? Can you talk in the textbook? But that's a kingly, priestly wisdom. Is this hard? Harsh? Unreasonable? Stupid? <laughs> Oh, it's everyday life. It's very practical life. Now, what the Lord would do? Would you think the Lord and one, you know, He will forgive? He will. He will. But would He uh, uh, continue as that young man to run around as if no care about anybody in the world, no care whatever going on, have that foolish to run the show? Or we will work, come work hard on that young man. Well, he deserved. You know, so he will be forgiving if the young man laid down the pride, wanted to revise the life, and right. So he will, he will be worth forgiving. You <laughs> know, more than second chance, maybe maybe seventy seven time chance if he wants to do right. But if he want to persist in this arrogant and the foolish way of life, would you think God going to care about what he thinks? Or more and more, his heart life gonna be very hard, am I? So, now, understandably, not many are query the problem of their life. Do you see many? Really understand that we, the care of the life, as is a huge problematic. I know many Christians don't do that at all. Feel foolish, like this young man, am I? Have no, almost like no basics of understanding. Whole life should be carried in a solid way. So now let me ask you, and I'll try to be hard on you, Elijah. Why I ask you to evaluate things? Well, I ask you, is I really wanted you to have a comment on things? Because the time for you to think along those terms, to think about more solidly, practically things. Am I right? Turn the book knowledge into what? In the world, practical applications of life. The books, it's just books. Beautiful teachers, ancient time, we can cast them in whatever light you want. Whether being Jesus or Confucius or anybody, or even me. But the whole applying your real life, that's up to whom? Up to us. I read the same book as you read it. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, now I turn around to pray for Elijah. We're going to pray. I pray the time he engaged with us. Your mind is really going to open up for real wisdom. Okay? So this is not a hard thing. This is not a limited life I have fun. It's only one. It's like a proverb. And my young Solomon is guided by David. Do you think David did tell him how to be, how the older people behave and not, to, not be so relaxed or carried away by his useful ways, am I right? So, we really be solid. Go ahead. Prudent. Learn prudency. The book of Proverbs is about prudency, for the most part, and wisdom, am I right? Prudence is how to behave yourself. Wisdom is what inspires you, you know, why you do things. So, go ahead. <clears throat> or truly, as we... Uh, our young father, we seek to, Lord, hone in our abilities, Lord, in our knowledge of the world around us, Lord, in our skills. Lord, this is a good thing at a young and immature age, but Lord, truly, as maturity comes, Lord, and as wisdom begins to take effect in a young life, Lord, things such as how to Apply this knowledge and the let, skill. Let, let's tell Elijah have vision. So Elijah will not understand. God is ever. He can do anything. He can use any topic, any lessons, any examples of life. He can learn from Sam Sam, right? <laughs> as well as Elijah. Right? So, your name's Elijah. So. <laughs> and you're supposed to learn from everything. If you can, if you want. I'm just talking. So yeah, go ahead. Lord, there does come a time to, Lord, put this knowledge or this skill under discipline, Lord, under the authority, Lord, of the elders that are placed in a life, 
So Lord, in this respect, Lord, I ask that Elijah would begin to or truly seek after this wisdom that comes through discipline, Lord, and discipleship. Lord, that he would seek to or truly gain understanding, Lord, of a different, Lord, and peculiar, but holy way of life. Mm. Lord, in, that in this light, he would know that in times such as these, Lord, we are not coming simply to learn a, a new, Lord, and lofty idea or knowledge, Lord, but to truly learn how to learn, Lord, to see, Lord, our lives in the truest sense, Lord, that there is. Lord, in accordance to the standard of your spirit, mm. Lord, that has shown even through writings such as these, Lord, mm. and even in your word, Lord, mm. that you gave to us. So, Lord, in this light, may we expand our minds, mm -hmm. Lord, not being open-minded to any other spirit that may try to infiltrate, mm -hmm. Lord, but to nonetheless remain open-hearted unto, Lord, what you seek to impart to us. Mm. So, Lord, in this life, may we be encouraged, but at the same time, serious in our approach to the, such a time. So, Lord, I pray these things over Elijah in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Elijah, tell her where you see. So, please be seated. Mm -hmm. um, I actually seen this before when Noah was playing, praying oh. before. Oh. Um, I saw, like, it was this place. It was pretty dark. And it was like a huge rainy mountain range like big place like, rainy means yeah, rainy like raining it was like oh, almost okay. dark it was, okay um it was like inside a mountain range very rocky oh. and i saw a like basically a storm was going on and i saw like a, a large rock it wasn't a mountain mm -hmm. but it was like it almost looks like a shape of an egg it was oh. very like rigid and rocky. Mm -hmm. and I saw this per thing almost like a size of a, like a giant, this large man mm. that had a really big hammer that he was holding. Okay. And, and he came and he lifted over his head and hit the top, the very top of the rock. Mm. And it split open and like inside was like this, like just like golden statue. Mm. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I saw. What does Golden Sand show look um, like? Um, I couldn't actually really, I couldn't, like, I can't really explain. Like, I, just like a golden statue, like, almost. It's bad one, good one. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to yeah, tell, well, but. What are kind of, what looks like? Almost like, like, like what you might think of in, like, uh, Back in the Israelites when they made that like golden calf or something. Golden calf. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Is that amazing? Mm. I think what happened is that, you know, all those are covered up with a human tradition, human it's like the wheel of the world. And I think you see the hammer hammer it all expose what is were inside. And I it's the we of a human education I believe. So mm. It's a uh, 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 egg supposed to be what to be, um, to be, you know, either hide something away or you supposed to be a womb and nurture something, you know. So I think it's also something. interesting too that um, in uncovering mm -hmm. something, especially something as intricate as and detailed as a statue, uh -huh. it's very rare that you would use something as blunt and destructive as a hammer to uncover something. Sure. Um, yeah. But that was what was used nonetheless to get rid of that rock was not a scalpel and not like a pickaxe that would do very small movements, but one yeah. mighty sweep and crushing sweep of hammer. It is the way we call it cultivated or certain conventions supposed to, to opine certain things, engage certain things, right? So as if God is, is a one, is a so poetic, so ply. He never talked about the real solid topic, you know, he never, he never really deal with the human soul. He never really apply force to the weeds in the attitude of man. So it's so terribly wrong, you know, God is so, sort of, and the cut is the deep, right? He can only reveal the, the axe lead to the, to the roots, right? So in this case, expose what is really inside. Now, I think it has to do with the, this, this young man, his education, you know? This way of educating young people. That's why I'm trying to say. 
Because then inspire to us. Oh, we're going to be wonderful, capable, have a great career, everybody applaud us. We made lots of money, lots of success, right? Hired by a big company. But actually, it's all what? It's all this idol. It's a polished way to think what your life can be used or successful, can be, have a good career, a good future. Now, the whole system of the world, most Christians will applaud that, as you're supposed to do, nothing wrong about that. But at the end of the day, we need to know that's not serving God. That's, that's, that's serving the God of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, then how you serve God is, is about to be a beautiful backer or learn decency of life. Learn to treat people with a lot of the care, especially be kind to people who serve you. Am I right? You know, you have compassion and have, have empathy, you know, not, not have arrogance. Am I right? So, in a sense, my point, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible for anyone who is successful to entertain arrogance as if you think that is how the world should be wrong. Making sense to you? Now, no godly man would do that. Nobody, no godly leader is supposed to do that. The more you have power, the more you are blessed, the more you have position, the more you should do good to the people who may less wantage, less uh, in, you understand know, my point? To, 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 to be a shepherd, to be a caretaker of others. And that starts when we are young. And then the certain tendencies, certain ways had to break off, you know? So the, the lady who serve you, um, let's see, Elijah, the lady who serve you a sandwich, would you blame her for asking you, you should not uh, take a free sandwich? Or should I have the, the first response? I'm so sorry, I was really hungry, I forgot to pay for this. If you intend to uh, the, uh, the cake sandwich without paying for it, well, shame on you. <laughs> Start with. <laughs> well, you know, as if you can't afford it, you know. So. <laughs> you know, says, who told you you can steal sandwich from others? So if I didn't pay, I didn't have a chance for God to pay for it, what have you. Maybe that is bad, eh, right? So, what if you're stealing? <laughs> you deal with the money, <laughs> finance. <laughs> we tell you that's good to do that in your company place. <laughs> but where is those happy to came from? And when challenge when you're young to become make a big deal of those things are not those educations were good educations or bad educations. That's my point. How it started, but young people don't necessarily these days. Everybody think it's wrong education, am I not supposed to tell young people <laughs> until they don't have a job or lost their job? Elijah, hold up your hand. I want you to pray. All right, and Elijah, uh, no way you close your eyes. You will have visions of what I think God going to use you to speak with. Now, how you start this kind of education is exactly in your age. Make it sense to you, you know. So. And it's important. <laughs> it's very important for life, for you to have a solid relationships, be solid with your life. Go ahead, pray for him. Father, Lord, I thank you for your teaching, Lord, your wisdom. Lord, I pray that it would be imparted to us, Lord, that through these examples in the Word, Lord, we would not make these foolish decisions decisions and actions, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray that we would be guided by your spirit and do things that you got us to do, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray that now you would give Noah a vision, Lord, mm. from your power, from your, your way, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray that we would follow you, Lord, wherever you go, Lord, mm. with no fear, but trust you, Lord. In everyday life, with everything we do, mm. so I pray this in your name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Let's learn, you know, from this point on. Let's commit to not take advantage of others, and right in whatever way. So rather to 
to pay honor due where honors due, pay people's labor where wages due. Am I so? You know, that's my point. Pay kindness to kindness, you know. So and don't mistreat each other. Simple, simple. Start with not to, not take advantage of others, you know. So making sense to you? So yeah, and、uh, don't misuse other kindness and trust. You know, don't look down people. It's You know that's basic human decency. You know, so you don't have to be taught by the Lord or Confucius or me. It's basic human decency, and learn those ways. I never have anybody, anybody, anybody in life to tell you otherwise. You know, they may take, may they get away from one or two instances. Well, eventually he's gonna catch them. <laughs> catch them. <laughs> you know, a decent man don't stumble. You know, with those things, that's exactly what Confucius is saying.、Um, be, be careful how you, how you treat people, how you, how you interact with people. Am I in words and actions? So, no one tell us what you see. So, we'll wrap it up here. So,、uh, so, from like my own perspective, is just I was、uh, a part of or in the vision. I saw it was like in this concrete cell where it was really dark.、Um, Like some kind of prison or something, and I saw it, like it was the ceiling was actually reasonably low, like I guess as low as the ceiling, if not lower.、Mm. And、uh, there was like a rectangle, rectangular shaped room, all made of concrete. And I saw at the very top、um, there was this window, this very small rectangle of light、mm. uh, that was coming forth.、Mm. And it was interesting because in the vision there was this liquid, this like almost this water. Um, that was,、uh, as the vision clarified, as it continued, it was not like clear water, but it was like almost like milk, almost. It was like this white water.、Mm. Um, I knew it wasn't milk, but it was this pure white liquid or water that was coming through、mm. this source of light、oh, this, wow. from this rectangle.、Mm. As it came into the prison or the the prison cell, there was almost this place where it would hit the barrier of darkness.、Um, Between the light that was coming from this window and then the darkness of the cell, and right as this liquid came and passed through this barrier of darkness,、mm. it would turn from the liquid, this white liquid that it was, to silver coins. Like it would have this really strange transformation that took place.、Mm. So as it passed through the barrier,、mm. it turned from this white liquid to a pouring forth of silver coins.、Mm. And I was sitting with a like a leather bag receiving receiving le- the treasures. <laughs> yeah, the, it was、oh, all the、yeah. silver coin.、Uh-huh. And then, as my bag continued to to fill,、mm-hmm. um, I then stepped back and then began to climb, try to climb this wall、mm-hmm. um, into this source of light. So、mm-hmm. I was no longer、uh, satisfied with the. The silver coin I was receiving through this transformation that took place as it entered、mm-hmm. the barrier of darkness,、mm-hmm. but I actually began to climb into this rectangle of light、mm. while being splashed with this white liquid, of course, <laughs>、yeah. um, to not only leave the,、uh, not only leave the cell, go to the source, but、yeah. even leave the cell.、Oh, um, oh. So that's where the vision ended: is me、oh. climbing through that rectangle. There, there you go. There you go. That's how powerful God's wisdom is.、Mm. He He will use anything. Any means to break the mode of thinking. So what's the cell is human education, human ways of thinking, am I? So we talk about the, from the starting point, read, uh, third, thirteen fifty two again. That's、mm-hmm. uh, all、uh, almost like a a a loop right now. So ended、mm-hmm. on the same notes because that's your vision. What's that? So read it again, Matthew thirteen fifty two. Let's just give a, a a spiritual education study. How you how you understand things <laughs> when you are taught in this way? Nothing can stop you to be learn to, to learn things. And right, it's amazing. It, it's crazy, huh?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Any man would think I'm talking about the human human wisdom, human information, human experiences, but I'm not. I'll try to tell you how God deal with a man. <laughs> Or deal with a, a a particular character from that, right? So, and God intended for all young ones, especially, to be educated in a very solid way, and we lost that. David had it, 
Abraham had it, Moses had it, or I had it. I mean, here is a, a teacher, Confucius had it, but not many had. And those people try to tell you how they educate young people actually <laughs> turn out to be the wrong way, you know. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Sorry. What does Jesus say there? Matthew thirteen fifty two. Yeah. He said to them, Therefore every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures new as well as old. And well old. So as you were carrying treasures and rice. So yeah. I think um, what God's doing here is in two uh, he's doing two things, two visions, almost like a contrast. The mountain and where the idol is, it's like the, the education of the world, right? The we, man, who attain unto knowledge, wisdom, and the way in the cell, on confined days, it's, you know, not out there, right? So, making sense to you? So, it's uh, it's the kind of education he may have for us, you know. So currently in great aging. So, but I don't really know. My 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 mind is to be carried away by the spirit right now. We need to wrap it up. So, uh, you you pray for us. Wrap it us up. So. Lord, we thank you. Lord, bless you for that which was shared today, Father. I ask that it would uh, truly be written upon. Hey, of our I'm going to use your your gifts today. I want you guys to see a vision for me. May the Lord use you. Amen. A few matters uh, in prayer, in, 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 uh, need uh, questing God for answer. I know that you don't have any information on those things. So, uh, so I want you guys to pray for me. So, yeah. Amen. Elijah, see a vision for me. Okay, so I think God can use you. Well, Lord, we do lift up our brother Emmanuel to you, Lord, with the concerns that we may or may not be aware of, Lord, within in relation to his own life. Lord, I ask that you would truly bring peace, Lord, and settlement in those things, Lord, as well as clarification, Lord, and wisdom and understanding, mm. Lord, concerning solution, Lord, and uh, following steps. Lord, I, you also put in my heart, Lord, to continue to pray for the situation, Lord, in Kenya, mm. Lord, with Brother Moses' wife, Violet. Mm. Lord, I ask that truly there would be a solution and resolve brought there, mm. Lord, not only in uh, a healing, Lord, in restoration of her body, mm. Lord, but also a restoration of the encouragement and peace, Lord, in the midst of that people, mm. Lord, on the work. Lord, an outflow of your spirit mm. in the midst of the spirits of that people. Mm. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, that there truly be a miraculous, Lord, sign, Lord, and symbol through that people, mm. Lord, and through the healing mm. of uh, Violet's body. Mm. So, Lord, we, we ask and pray for these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Mm. So, Lord, I, I continue to lift up, Lord, the condition Lord, in the needs, both spiritually and physically, of your people. Mm. So, Lord, I pray that in every way um, we would continue to focus our hearts and our minds on you, mm. Lord, regardless of daily uh, responsibilities and circumstances. Mm. Lord, which even those we do under and through your name, mm. Lord, and according to your purpose and way of life. Mm. So, Lord, we lift all concerns, great and small, unto you. Mm. Lord, and lay them before your feet, mm. Lord, in reverence, Lord, and in trust and faith mm. and in hope. So, mm. Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Mm. Okay, uh, Elijah, continue to pray, and I want Noah to see vision for me as well. So, I think you guys are going to see. I pray God give you similar things, but you will see things for me. So. Um. <clears throat> Father, we love you, Lord. I. Thank you for your love, Lord, and your mercy, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray that you would impart your wisdom to each of us here, Lord. Mm. Lord, I thank you for Emmanuel to help with these things, Lord, to teach us, Lord. Lord, I pray that we would not 
take it for granted, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray that we would pl- let it play out in our lives, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray for your p- people, Lord. As Noah prayed, Lord, I pray for Moses' wife right now as they might be going through mm. hard times, Lord. I pray that they would feel your presence, Lord, mm. and your hand over them, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray that she would be healed in Jesus' name, Lord. Mm. Any evil source and around there, Lord, to be cut off in Jesus' name, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray for that people. Mm. Lord, I pray that you would bless them. Mm. Lord, I pray for us here also, Lord, things that we may struggle with, Lord, mm. that you would be with us. Mm. Lord, that we would trust in you. Mm. Pray this in your name. Amen. Mm. Amen. Start with Elijah. Elijah, what do you see? What do you saw? Yeah. Um... I saw a pretty short vision, but I saw there was almost like a chariot, like you might see like old war chariot, and then there was four horses pulling this, and they were in a cornfield, but on the back, they were pulling a chariot, and behind the chariot was actually like a a plow almost, I don't know what you'd call it, but it was plowing through this field and just like plowing straight through it, just cutting everything down that it went through. So, mm. Any impressions of is it good seeing or disruptive seeing, whatever? Well, it didn't, it was, it was just like a wide open field. It didn't okay. see, it just, seemed, it was obviously, yes, it was destructive because it was tearing sure, it down, sure, but yeah. yeah, it didn't, but it, it didn't but seem it, particularly bad though. It's not you will be measured. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Mm. They're like what pure white horses, four of them, like mm-hmm. pulling that. So when the field of plowed, it's like not the harvesting, but like a new planting or something like that? Yeah, it, it almost seems like it was tearing down and replanting. Tear down, replanting. I think that's what it is. Mm, that's crazy. Wow. You know, the field that we have in Kenya is a cornfield, right? Because the maize field. So mm-hmm. I think God going to do something new there. So. Mm. Go ahead. I uh, saw two visions. The first one was like a very brief image. I just saw um, like this uh, this wall of... Hold on. I want Elijah to hear and have an understanding. We got in the prayer vision through you for me. Okay, that's, that's a gift you have to apply, you know. Um, prophetic gift of visions had to be interpreted, and right? So you can ask God to speak to you. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah. Well, I just saw this like this wall of uh, somewhat moist and still moldable clay almost. And from this wall, I saw surface the silhouette and figure of a man mm. who was being formed as he came out of this wall. Mm. And the last thing I saw from this vision is he was fully formed and then came almost to life from this this wall of moist clay it was like gray color mm. um, and even as he began to walk away you could still see like the imprint of his silhouette having been detached from this wall mm. um, still upon this wall of clay so itself. when he's a form he changes the color become a real man or from still what I saw, he, he remained as a clay man a even statue. as he continued to walk mm. but there was this uh, knowledge of there was still a needed and continued process of formation, even though his body had been formed, okay. and he was still going through a process of change. Mm. Second one, you said uh, two. In the second one, the, I saw. Uh, Elijah, do you have understanding of this? No, I don't have much to impart from it. Um, in the second one, I saw uh, just this, not particularly a, a desert land, because there was still green brush. Um, it almost remind me of like a land that would be in California mm-hmm. or something like that. So it was still very dry and hot, but there was still uh, a, consider- a considerable amount of life. Mm. Um, it's like a wasteland, however, or something like that. I'm similar so sorry. to that, yeah. Okay. There's, yeah. Still, there's still life in... Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's still habitable. I, I understand, yeah. And so uh, what I saw was like this a long mound of dirt that was leading into like a tunnel. Um, mm just barely raised wide mount of dirt, um, almost like it was being 
it was there prepared for something. And what I saw was a paintbrush, like a huge paintbrush coming with being held by a huge hand, come and rub its, uh, uh, draw itself along this mound. Oh. And following the, the draw on this mound was a train track oh. that was uh, upon this mound as it led into the tunnel. Oh. And not only was it a, it was not just a train track, it was a double train track is what I, the most interesting thing about this vision. Well, what does double train track mean? There is a parallel train track? Yeah, there are parallel train tracks oh, okay. that led into this tunnel. Hmm. Um, I think in some in some sense that's a common maybe maybe a common thing, but usually it's just so one. So when you track. get into the tunnel, yeah, remain two train tracks. Yeah, it okay. continue to be two train tracks oh. through the tunnel, even out the other side at some point. But um, this paintbrush revealed. <laughs> well, actually, it wasn't revealing. It wasn't revealing. It was creating these creating these, these train tracks as they drew along the oh. mountain dirt that was made for those train tracks. What that means? Uh, you got some strange region there. I mean, it's <laughs> beautiful, but at the same time, it's out of my context. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, I, I think both, uh-huh. if, uh-huh. if not at least one, then both of the visions uh, applied to your life in some way. How so? I, I really don't. I'm not sure. I don't have understanding of these visions, but um, huh. in the fact that you were praying... Uh, for me, for myself, have, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, I try to apply that, but I don't really understand it. So it's a strange region. What do you think? You? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> it's kind of strange. <laughs> it's just strange, huh? I think there is some application to the fact that there's like a double portion. Of a double portion. Two yeah. train tracks. Yeah, that came to my mind as yeah. well. Yeah, I think it's to do with the kingly empiricity. Mm, wisdom yeah. maybe but I would have thought they come together as one you know so who knows maybe four minutes